Hello! Today's musing of the day is about finding the mystical in the mundane. And so this is a really important concept for all of us because it's so easy to get stuck and to feel stuckness in our life and to feel this sense of malaise and oh my god everything is the same every day when am I going to get excited when am I going to go on my next vacation and so what I think is so amazing is that if we can take the time to just focus on just the daily rudimentary boring things that go on that we just kind of miss the point with is there can be so much joy in every single moment so um, I actually had this, uh, this moment of reflection and it reminded me to actually go and pick up a book off my bookshelf by Sarah Van Brethnick called Simple Abundance, A Day Book of Comfort and Joy. Now, this is absolutely a wonderful daily reader. It's actually got every day of the week for 365 days. And what's so amazing about this particular author is she... Um, she started off writing two other books and she was writing about, you know, 19th century domestic living and it has this great style about her. And so that's what she, she really did well with, but she found that during that period in her life that she was sort of inundated with feelings of anxiety. Um, you know, she was a workaholic and she called it a careaholic. She was, um, focused on wealth and money and, she was feeling envious of other people and she just wasn't in the right place in her mind. And so one of the things that she was desperately looking for was almost like a way to creatively express herself, to look for something that was a little bit more inspiring. So that's actually why she decided to write this book. And so she found it very self-healing. And personally, I found this was a really great life-changing book myself. So what's interesting in this book is there's really set six core um, creative and spiritual principles that are laced throughout these daily readings um, and these thoughts that she shares. And so here's, I'll share them with you um, as I go through this. The first core principle is really around gratitude. And um, as many of you know, this is actually a practice that many, many people discuss and that there's actually scientific evidence to show that if you actually do even three gratitudes a day, this can dramatically decrease uh, feelings of depression and overall sense of well-being um, and many other different kinds of biological processes and, uh, and health reasons of just feeling gratitude. And part of this process is taking this depletable resource, which is your willpower or your energy, um, and being able to focus in these areas that we have become unintentionally blind to. As all of us know, if we were able to concentrate on the millions and billions of data sets and information that's bombarding us at any given moment, there's no way we would even, even be able to function. So biologically, there's a reason why we, have only, we only have the ability to focus on a few things at any given time. So what, what gratitude actually does is it anchors us and it allows us to start looking at the things that we actually have found have become automatic or that we take for granted or we no longer notice because it doesn't fire our fight and flight response. So gratitude is a great way for us to notice these things and to really start taking note of the mystical and the mundane. The second core point around a second core tenant in her principles is around simplicity. And um, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this. I used to get this a lot. You'd watch somebody do something or on a commercial or in a movie or a really successful entrepreneur, and they're talking about this great idea. And then you're looking at this kind of like, I could have had a V8, or I could, I mean, I could have thought of that, or that's so dumb, or why didn't I think of that? And what's so amazing about that, that cognition is that brilliance lies in the simplicity. And some of the most brilliant ideas are the ones that are most successful. So we don't have to get super complicated with things. Simplicity is really an amazing thing. And, um, and we probably also notice this in various things like relationships or work. Um, when a relationship, in, and all of these things have two sides to a stick. There's, there's always this amazing dichotomy to complication and simplicity because both of them exist. 
For example, relationships, when they really, really work, they're simple, but when they're not kind of working that well, they're extremely complicated. So um, they actually have both dimensions. And so it's really up to us to be able to look on that side of the stick or to be able to change our mindset so that we can see the simplicity of how things can work and great, uh, great function. The third tenet in her spiritual principles uh, is around order. When we actually have order in our life, uh, when we declutter, when we remove all of these physical and emotional distractions, not only in our physical environment, but also in our mind, we can actually have a great dimension of happiness and we can focus on our thoughts more clearly and there's more clarity. Her fourth dimension or, or, or concept is around harmony. And harmony is something that I often like to reflect on as going on internally. Uh, for those of you who've done any of the Brightline Freedom courses or worked with the internal family systems parts work, where we have, you know, and again, this parts work has actually been a concept through years, uh, through lots of different famous psychiatrists, you know, again, was coined by Nietzsche when he talked about having us warring with the various dimensions and parts to ourselves. This has actually been a known fact for many, many years. So when we can get into a place where our highest self can take a seat, uh, can take it this, uh, the seat of awareness and all of our emoting parts can actually take a back seat and just kind of come along for the ride, we can get into a state of harmony. So um, I think this is a, a great place where we can release the chi, be able to breathe in the prana and be able to have this flow of this wonderful energy through our energy chakras in a very free flowing state. So this is really healthy for us mentally. It's excellent for our microbiome and just general sense of well-being. Her sixth core principle is about beauty. And when I actually kind of went over this concept, it made me think about a beautiful book that one of my Gideon Games friends had recommended and I just purchased it. It's actually a cute little hardbound or hardcover book called The Quiet Eye by Sylvia Shaw Judson. And, um, and thank you to my, you know, my Gideon game partner who mentioned this to me. I just picked up this book. It's really, really gorgeous. And, um, and Sylvia is a sculptress and a Quaker and lives life with a lot of stoic philosophy. And a couple of pictures in this that really drew my attention was one of just a very simple black and white picture of a um, of a church bench, which I just thought showed such great simplicity and symmetry. And I love the angle that it was taken in. And I also really loved this beautiful photo by, or this um, uh, piece of art from Vincent van Gogh called Shoes on a Tile Floor. And I love the beauty of this because it really symbolizes to me the beauty in um, or really a life well lived. And these really symbolize in a pair of shoes. But it really goes to show that we can find beauty in all kinds of different images. We can find awe-inspiring concept in things that we can see and perceive. And, um, uh, and also in the way Sylvia has actually exemplified in this little book of images and art with um, famous quotes is just being able to go through this journey of artwork and be able to uh, feel the joys of, of, of beautiful things in artwork. Um, and then um, uh, Sarah's final tenet in her spiritual principles is around joy and finding places where we can look for joy. And again, this actually brought me to another book on my bookshelf. I love this book. This book is mouthwatering. It's a book called A Natural History of the Senses by Diane Ackerman. She is a brilliant writer, the most descriptive writer. She can literally paint a canvas with her words. I truly encourage you to read this book if you're into that sort of thing. But I love the way Diane exemplifies the history of the senses. She has this uncanny way of expressing how you can feel joy through all of our experiences, through sight, sound, smell. Um, I love how she can depict the shape of smell, the notions and nations of sweat, the fact that our skin has eyes, that our heart has, has ears, and then we can get lost in the sounds of quicksand and whale sounds, so, or, and whale songs. So, so beautiful. 
And I just love how we can get the whiff of joy in all these aspects through our experiences and through our senses. So ultimately what Sarah Van Brethnick has, has reminded me of is that there's brilliance and happiness in the mundane. How do we find the mystical in the everyday things that we take for granted? How do we actually find these sacramental moments and these epiphanies in having unwashed hair, <laughs> feeling a mood swing, or um, having a deadline for work that you can't seem to get, or that the floors are dirty? So I think that there's an understanding that abundance runs in parallel to lack. And how do we make sure that in this dichotomy or this two ends of the stick, that we always keep our eyes focused on um, the transcendental awareness that we can get um, abundance in all of these small things. So today the question or the challenge of the day is, how are you personally going to seek the mystical in the mundane? And how will you um, seek the joys and the beauty of the everyday things that you run into today? So anyways, wishing you a wonderful day and um, saying hello to all of you and uh, having a great expressive day ahead.